COVID-19 and the Function of the Creative Space. Co-authored by Charlie Henshaw and Dan Morley. This paper will discuss the impact of the global pandemic on the function of the design studio as a creative space, proposing a framework for implementing and evaluating the benefits of virtualization. In doing so, it draws an analysis of the working practices of the creative sector, creative pedagogy and communities of practice. Typically, design studios are highly visual and interactive spaces that have been central to creative practices for over a century and pivotal in supporting critique and sharing feedback early and often. As a physical studio and student self-reflection are essential components of the teaching and learning practices in art and design education. However, due to the impact of the pandemic, physical studio environments have been unable to function as intended, with traditional working practices challenged and disrupted. Studies on social media based learning suggest that the use of social media for teaching and learning within design studio contexts may support studio critiques, peer interactions and a uniform shared experience. Building on this research, Tomoff University trialled a studio virtualisation project to support students with the challenges of online and blended learning. By creating a nurturing virtual platform, principally by Instagram, for graphic design and illustration students, the project created a space where students learn by offering feedback exchanging ideas and networking. The potential for social media tools to provide a working platform was evident, offering the traditional aspects of a physical creative space, inspiration, critique, cooperation and collaboration. The project addressed key societal challenges posed by COVID. How we continue to work productively and effectively in virtual spaces, and what may enhance the traditional approaches in a post-COVID environment. The society exploring new ways of working, this research has the potential to offer a framework for the creative and educational sectors who are struggling to maintain communities of practice and to address a contemporary issue productively. The studio as a physical learning environment is seen as central to design practices and education and typically have a high visual and material character. Walls replete with post-it notes, sketches hung to share concepts and physical models and prototypes scatter in desks. The function of these objects is to spark new ideas and encourage creative discourse. The physical studio space is also important for showcasing work and sharing feedback. The surroundings are integral to the collaborative activity. The studio is designed to support group orientation, creative cooperation and design critiques, a defining activity in studio pedagogy. Design studios and educational settings are often organised and arranged to mimic the working methods of the professional workplace, a key component in design instruction, to support the development of the student's critical judgement, analysis and strategic thinking. Subsequently, the hallways and studio spaces are awash with work in progress, occasionally photocopied from sketchbooks, and not just a celebration of exemplar student output. At DMU, the essential role of the studio is established within the suite of graphic design programmes and has been vital to its success for many years. But average higher education learning environments are commonly associated with traditional lecture halls or tutor-led workshops and workspaces as opposed to tutor-facilitated spaces that support experimentation, collaboration and peer-to-peer -peer learning. All vital elements of the design studio's pedagogic culture. It is typical within the sector for studio-based teaching and learning to provide a safe space for students to engage with practice-led experiential learning, traditionally entwined with problem-centred learning and critiques. At Demofi University, the graphic design programme team worked hard to build and maintain a supportive community where students feel confident to learn and have described the course as being like a family. Here, purpose-built, dedicated studios, all of which are adorned with design inspiration curated over the years, play a vital role in students' learning as they absorb tacit knowledge through the navigation of various learning spaces. The studios also support a wide variety of learning opportunities through the multiplicity of space. From large studios, small tutorial rooms, soft seating and more, all supporting reflective dialogue with peer-to-peer -peer key to enhancing a students' tacit sense-making and design knowledge development. The design studio is not only a place for pedagogic interactions, but also a shared social space used by students to gather outside of timetable sessions to access facilities, technologies, and also to socialise and to support each other more generally. 
Conventional characteristics of design studio culture allow for the studio space to occasionally evolve to become the central point and hosting venue to multiple different uh, scenarios, including studio critiques with teaching staff and professionals, exhibitions, guest lectures, and student society events. It is the community of practice within the studio that are of paramount importance to design education. As an order to develop an understanding of design practices, students learn in a practice community through doing, observing, playing and assimilating, also known as the development of active knowledge through experience, with a studio central to knowledge acquisition and creation. Clearly, studio teaching is a well-established and conventional practice, but it was predicted that it would be necessary to embrace new learning environments, methods and increased peer-to-peer -peer learning in higher education as a result of rising student numbers and economic pressures. The prediction or assumption was a slow and considered pedagogic ev evolution that would embrace technology at a suitable pace, with appropriate levels of testing, evaluation and shared good practice informing others. Ultimately, the global pandemic accelerated this major shift change in learning, with academics forced to pivot to online teaching and assessment at a pace previously many would have considered unmanageable. With the uncertainty and confusion of such disruption, programmes that relied on dedicated teaching spaces to support communities of practice were forced to consider strategies to transfer such vital supportive structures for students into online learning environments. As the physical design studios at DeMoff University were unable to function and traditional working practices challenged and disrupted, a creative response was required to continue to support the student cohorts. In March 2020, a proof of concept was established through trialling studio virtualisation to develop a framework to extend and integrate a new model of virtual collaborative learning into all aspects of the curriculum, with the hashtag Virtual Studio DMU launched later that year. The Virtual Studio project explored the potential of transferring the physical, stu uh, physical studio culture so vital for the design subject areas into a virtual space, and the potential for social media tools to provide a working platform was evident. Current students have growing expectations for flexibility away from linear and university decreed timetables towards an emphasis on mobility, online social connections and increased use of personal devices. An Anitra Nottingham 2015 explored the pedagogic effect in both on-site and online graphic design learning spaces and the role they play in the formation of the design students. Here, the development of the design eye was explored through establishing an online or virtual hallway using blogs and Pinterest, a highly visual and virtual pinboard site that actually pin or collect images from the web. Pinterest was, at the time, a leading virtual platform of choice and was used in this study as a simple yet potentially effective alternative to walking the hallways, walls and display spaces within design studios. It was noted that physical hallways allow students to regularly benchmark themselves against their peers. But, powered by the affordances of the Pinterest interface, an online learning space allows students to navigate closer to, and through the act of collecting, touch exemplar design works of peers and expert others. The project was indeed a signpost pointing the way towards a more bright, vibrant, effective online learning space, one more capable of allowing design students to catch their design eye. For the virtual studio, alternative platforms were considered, such as Pinterest, but they did not offer the required functionality of a working studio and were more a tool for collection and inspiration rather than a supporting critique. A space was required where students could experiment and collaborate without the mediation of an instructor, with the focal point of instruction and learning clearly the crafting and assemblance of the desired artefact. Instagram was chosen as it was a well-established and free image and video social media application that's easy accessible to download and a flexible and portable resource that can be accessed via tablet, computer or smartphone. The platform offered many of the essential aspects of the physical creative space, inspiration, critique, cooperation and collaboration through online engagement. Here students could learn by exchanging ideas, commenting and liking posts, viewing and navigating through creative spaces, networking and following other members of the online community. Reflecting on the major shift change in learning brought on by the pandemic, Utilising Instagram as a popular social media platform allowed for a seamless integration of the virtual studio into the lives of many students who are engaging with social media on a daily basis. Initially, students were invited to share their work as a grid post on Instagram story with the tag 
at DMU underscore graphics, which place their work on the profile tagged grid. Additionally, students are able to direct message a set of images alongside a caption to contextualize their work if it were to be posted onto the main grid. As a virtual studio grew, the program team supported the student cohort in the development of their own dedicated design accounts, encouraging professional practice. With dedicated help to acquire the necessary skills and file preparation and content curation, with lead academics developing how-to guides and pre-recorded workshops that students access via Microsoft Teams and Blackboard. Through setting up, utilising and maintaining their own academic Instagram accounts, students learn to promote their practice and interact with others through active learning, as well as engage with self-directed study and self-motivated investigation. Lead academics curated inspiration for students that were socially, culturally and globally relevant in order to reflect the diverse design community within the student cohorts. For example, for Black History Season or International Women's Day, a full day of posts celebrating female graphic designers or underrepresented industry creators was scheduled, reflecting a diversity of cultural, social and economic backgrounds. To ensure that students felt they were accepted and affirmed, they belonged to a community, engagement with industry professionals, alumni and guest speakers were curated to represent a diverse range of social, cultural and global backgrounds as possible. The virtual studio was designed to be a supportive voice to inspire students studying on the programmes, but it also offered a platform for students to raise awareness and promote international causes such as the Black Lives Matter movement or support the NHS campaign amongst others. The virtual studio was initially developed specifically for the DME graphic design community, enabling students and staff to be key participants and stakeholders. And the principal aim was to reflect a physical design studio as a designated space for students to socialise and support one another generally, and the DME Instagram account inherently followed these same social constructs. Typically, a student social and support network would be localised between peer groups. However, as the project evolved and developed into a nurturing virtual platform, engagement organically grew to include wider audiences. Industry experts reached out to share knowledge, learning experiences and advice to members of the virtual studio community. And this integration of professional expertise within design studio pedagogy allowed for students to analyse and synthesise industry practice and standards outside of formal scheduled teaching. Many new relationships with industry professionals were developed as a consequence as well as the maintenance of existing partnerships. And with the limitation of travel lifted, guest lectures are organised with the designers and creators from all over the globe in terms of enhancing the student experience. This had particular resonance with the pedagogy of design practice, with natural emphasis on utilising members of the relevant professional communities within teaching and learning arrangements. As the virtual studio grew in scope and users, an online scheduling platform, Later.com, was used to manage time effectively and maintain a balanced workload for the lead academics. Posts are collated and scheduled through Later.com in order to create an efficient online learning environment and gather analytics of users and engagement. Additionally, Instagram analytics provided information on followers, impressions, reach, audience gender, location, age and detailed hashtag analytics. The virtual studio community increased daily as a result of new authentic content, highlighted the impact of the virtual studio. And during the last 16 months, followers grew from 300 to 1,571 followers at the time of writing. Further information gathered through Later.com indicates the followers' location, highlighting the majority were local and based in Leicester, 56%, and are between the age of 18 to 24 years old, 52%. This data confirms that the virtual studio developed an effective and positive resource that engaged the intended student cohort, but also a wider audience. Additionally, in 2021, as the pandemic showed no signs of abating, the programme's annual sketchbook and poster show, a celebration of level four and five creative practice, was held entirely by the DMU Graphics Instagram account. Here, enthusiastic students were supported in the process of designing and implementing a visual language for an online social media exhibition, and engagement from all stakeholders was high. A positive outcome of this online exhibition was increased engagement from all students, but notably our international students who were unable to travel to the UK. 
With this social media exhibition, space providing them with a new opportunity to engage with a studio-based community, and they in turn encourage their friends, families and external associates to also engage and vote for their favourite exhibited works. The virtual studio team worked hard to support the sustainability of traditional design pedagogy through the development of an online studio model, which offered an alternative to the physical environments made impossible by COVID restrictions. Although augmented digital classrooms are developing rapidly, it is important to remember that Western European history and studio-based pedagogic environments are cherished by those that experience them, both from a teacher and learner perspective. Although the virtual studio platform should not be seen as an alternative to design materiality and the vibrancy this brings, the project explores current needs of the emerging identity of post-digital cultures to address a contemporary issue productively. The limitations are evident. As within collaborative design, the type of information that is communicated between designers is multimodal and multisensory, yet designers are connected by a single screen and a single VLE. Additionally, use of smartphones for tools for pedagogic purposes has been the focus of many studies. However, this is an area that requires further investigation, specifically learning through portable devices, in addition to the ethics surrounding using social media as a tool for learning. As well as this, the growth of smartphone users has made social media more accessible to the masses and therefore subject specific investigation into the impact would further develop our understanding of its place in higher education design pedagogy. Clearly the virtualization of traditional practice is a key debate and to under understand how it works and what it means can only benefit all sides. Initiatives such as the virtual studio could contribute to wider societal benefits and is accordingly relevant to future endeavors and contexts.